Wow. Wasn't a whole lot the spotter could do for him. <laughs> that, let me tell him. you, if Dale Jarrett hadn't have drawn up, he wouldn't Whoa. have made it. <laughs> I guarantee he grew up in a seat. And Jeremy, of course, was involved in an accident earlier back in the race, and he's out there 62 laps down. Once again, as we talk, just trying to make laps and accumulate points and gain positions. All right, we've been following Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and Ricky Rudd on pit stops. And we'll take that same order again as they come down pit road at lap 258. Let's see if the pits are open this time. They are. Here they come. There's our Fox tracks. Again, monitoring the 48, the 17, Ricky Rudd. As we remember, Matt Kenseth went in the 17, will fill off first, then Ricky Rudd, then Jimmy Johnson, Dick Burford. Well, Matt Kenseth's crew still would like to be able to work on those springs. They'd like to pull a spring rubber out of the rear, but they will not spend the amount of time it takes to do that on pit road. So they're going to make the adjustments by putting wrenches in the back of the car. That's faster, but it doesn't make the car run quite as well as Kenseth might like to make it run. Steve. Then Ricky Rudd on pit road. They talked about raising the track bar. Ricky said, no, let's not go crazy. Let's, crazy, let's put four tires on it. Minor air pressure adjustment. Matt Yoakum. Jimmy Johnson says his car was really, really tight as a 17 6 or trying to beat the 48 up. But Jimmy, due to this great stop by his crew and this pit stall, will beat them off. Jimmy was really, really tight. Chad Canals asked him, was it because you were tucked up underneath the 7? He says, no. So they put one pound of air back in the right rear. They also made a chassis adjustment. Bobby Labonte backing up to his pit. I bet he's got a wheel loose. I bet he's got a wheel loose. He's going back to get it tightened up. And what's wrong with Dale Jr.'s car? They're probably adjusting on that fender. They may be actually that. adjusting that yeah. toe out that we That's talked about earlier. I think they're checking off. Yeah, the left rear tire just came off. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Boy, it, it, that's a great catch, but I'm sure the crew is hauling for him to stop. Well, and he's not in his pit is the problem as well. The way he goes. That's still, I mean, when they when they started hollering at him, if he had gone around the track, he'd have gotten, he'd probably stalled on the back straightaway. And he almost made it back to his pits without that tire coming off. It came off, actually, like it's almost like when he stopped is when it came off. No, no real damage. I mean, that's not going to hurt anything right there. And what our pit guys are saying is the air wrench broke. Jackman dropped the jack. That's Bobby Labonte's sign to go. But the lug nuts were not tight. Broken air wrench. All right, Larry, do you have a clear signal if a tire changer has a problem so the Jackman knows? I have told my guys, you're wearing a radio. Use that radio. And I know it's sometimes hard to do when you're running an air wrench, but that's what that radio's for. Here's what happens, though. You, you, you're used to hearing it saying, go, go, go. What they usually say is, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the uh -huh. driver can't pick up the difference. So it takes a stop. You got to stop. Or like we use, trouble, trouble, trouble. Trouble, yeah. <laughs> trouble for Jeremy Mayfield. He's taken his car to the garage after bringing out the seventh caution of the evening. America 600 on Fox is brought to you by Beachwood H. Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. They got the screaming memes and all those other new groups on that Fox Crank It Up CD, but nothing gets your feet moving like a little James Brown. James Brown can do the boogity, boogity, boogity with the best of them, baby. <laughs> all you right. know, we've been talking about the track conditions, and when this race started, it was about 125 degrees. Now it's 90 degrees, but the significance, it's the same all the way around this racetrack because the sun is history, so at least the conditions all the way around are consistent. Now, pit stop sequence. I love the races happening on pit road. Look at Sterling Marlin, fastest pit stop. Went from 8th to 5th. There's a reason, that pit stop. Jimmy Johnson, 15.9. Matt Kenson, 15.3. These guys held their own, but because these guys had that 14.3, look at there, 8th to 5th. Let's go to pit road and Matt. Right now, Mike, 
to Dale Earnhardt Jr. is talking to Tony Urie Jr. Are you going to come in for a fifth time, Tony? Uh, we might come in, just top it off, just get a little extra fuel. I mean, he knocked the toe out in that little incident there. It was nobody's fault. Just got loose and got into him. But uh, knocked the toe off quite a bit. Uh, we towed it in. It looks good on the concrete, you know. But uh, best we can tell, we're back to normal. So let's see what the car's got. They strung it up four different times and towed it in about one round. Steve Burns. I'm out here in the 18th pits. Want to show you what happened to Bobby Labonte. This is the air gun. When they go to reverse, they hit this pin. When they did, the assembly came out, and it broke in half. They found this on pit road. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Well, Kurt Busch has surely had an eventful 600 race here. Uh, he lost the oil pump early in practice. They had to change the engine. That caused him to have to start all the way at the back of the pack. Early in the race, he spun. Then he got a cut tire. Guess what? Kurt Busch is running in sixth spot. He's a contender despite all that. Mike? He has had quite an afternoon, and it's... A long way from being over, 138 laps to go. But see, it, it, to, to him, he's a young kid, this is an adventure. Right. I mean, it's 600 mile adventure. Hey, I guess this is what happens in a 600 mile race, because he don't have enough experience to know the difference. Let's give you an update earlier in the weekend. Yesterday, Jeff Green won the NASCAR Bush Series race here as Old Spice presents the NASCAR Bush Series results. Greg Biffle in a near photo, Scott Riggs, Mike McLaughlin, Todd Bodine were the first five across the line. The point standings in the Bush Series showed that Jack Sprague unable to capitalize as he cut down a tire and hit the wall with just a couple of laps to go. So Jason Keller is the leader by 21 points as they head for Dover, Delaware next weekend. Sears presents the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series standings where Mike Bliss has just a one-point lead over David Starr, Rick Crawford, Jason Leffler, and Ted Musgrave are the front five after five of 22 races. We saw Bobby Labonte in 18 car having to pit out of his box because of losing that left rear. He's still on the lead lap, but he will be penalized a lap because of pitting out of the box. That's the penalty when you don't make your pit stop in your pit box. Yeah, that's, uh, that's too bad. He caught it, but uh, you know he couldn't get back in his own pit box. That's too bad. Seven times the pole winner has won the 600. Fred Lorenzen, Buddy Baker, David Pearson twice, and Jeff Gordon three times. I'm Ben Yazi. I'm a code talker. I know the answer to this. Radio Shack trivia. The Indy 500 used to be run on Monday, and so two drivers won the 600 at Charlotte the same year they raced in the Indy 500. You're on your own on this one, driver, buddy. Allison and Yarborough. Well, wait a minute. There's Cale Yarborough and Leroy No, no, no. It's Allison and Yarborough. Be specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that. I know that's who it is, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I knew, I knew which, I knew that those were the two names. I just couldn't remember the first name. Let's go downstairs where the no vacancy sign is lit at the Hollywood Hotel. All right, we're coming up here on uh, well, we're lap 266. Now, when we get to the around the 300 lap, a little bit beyond that, we're yeah. getting around 500 miles, Jeff Hammond, and then that's when you go beyond what they they don't do normally that's when they what, race. That's when I start watching lap 334. Will meet 500 miles have been run. And from that point on is where the 600 mile attrition as far as the engine, the driver, anything else on this race car, when we have problems with it, I would contribute to that, the extra 100 miles we have to run here. And that's when you're going to separate the men from the boys. And the Iron Men, uh, Iron Man, the Ricky Rudd setting the record tonight, currently running fourth, hanging in there. And again, the two round drivers, Kenseth and Martin, behind the current leader, Jimmy Johnson. Let's go back upstairs. We've had seven caution flags. We are now at exactly two thirds of 600 miles. And we had some of our leaders that came in like Tony Urey Jr. talked about and topped off with fuel, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Bill Elliott on our lead lap cars. And this should get those guys particular where they can make this race on one more stop should it stay green. But this is the kind of race, we talk about Kurt Busch and all the adventures he's had, but the guys that know this race and know how to win it, Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin, and in 11th place, Dale Jarrett. And green, green, green. 400 miles down, 200 to go. On the lead lap. Boy, it's always exciting uh, on the restart. Car. They drive you crazy. You got a good car, but you got to contend with lap cars. Get three wide in places you don't want to. You got guys, oh man, 
Jeff Green in the 30 car has a problem. Well, he starts stacking up behind him in three and four. He may have a he may have a flat tire, but that car had been handling all that great. So Frank Kimlin in 26, he had to go all the way down into the grass almost to get by. Yeah, he's try 30 cars trying to get out of the way, yep. I do believe. And Kimmel didn't get by. He comes up and almost roughs up Robbie Gordon. Now he makes the pass. Looks like the 30 cars. Oh, Jeff Burton, who had come back from the garage. Remember they had engine troubles earlier? They've got troubles now. Anybody going to get a lap back here? There's a good chance. I don't think so. Caution is out, though. Caution good is chance. Out. Nobody can make it. Blaney and Hutt Strickland. Blaney in the 77. They tried to get their lap back. That 48 cars is too fast. Well, and the caution yeah, came out with the leader too close here. to the start finish line, hurting the back. Yeah, already yeah. everybody a shot. 30 car on pit road. Now, when that caution flag comes out, everybody, you know, people start checking. That was caused by that 30 car. You run up on the back of him, he's not going anywhere. That's his spotter's job to let you know that guy's in trouble. Jeff Green gets his tire fixed. Jeff Burton goes to the garage for the second time tonight. I bet old Scooby was drawing up then, boys. Jeff Burton will join Ryan Newman, Ward Burton, and Kevin LePage. And we only have one car that's in the garage making repairs, Jeremy Mayfield. So still a lot of our race cars still out there, almost 500 miles into this race. Old Scooby was saying, rock, rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 18 of those cars are still on the lead lap at 404 miles. Fox welcomes you back to Lone's Motor Speedway, 129 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson leading Matt Kenseth. As you see the track in the background earlier today at the Fox Souvenir trailer. Look who was on hand. Jeff Hammond signing autographs. There's Larry Mack, DW. You can pick up hats, uh, T-shirts, all kinds of stuff. I think there's even, you know, boogity, boogity, boogity on something, right? Yeah. And you can pick up a CD, more exciting than Bachelorettes in Alaska, all stuck in the same igloo. Fox Sports presenting Crank It Up the CD. Slayer, Rob Zombie, Stained. That's, uh, that's Jeff's favorite. Had P.E.'s crossed down traffic. And Mark Cherry's on the road again. And a lot more. Crank It Up the CD. Rev your engine on race day all on your own. This collection of remixes and originals that you can't get anywhere else. Although you hear it here occasionally. Crank It Up the CD, Breaking the Rules. And it's in stores. Yeah, and uh, let's check out uh, Pit Road and see what's going on and go down to Matt Yoka, Matt. Dick Bergman, I'm sorry. Uh, Matt Kenseth has run at the front or near the front all night tonight. His crew chief is Robbie Reiser. We're getting down to it, Robbie. What's the strategy from here to the checker? I don't know. I tried to get an answer out of you, Dick, to help me with this, but uh, probably what we'll do is uh, run one more stop and finish the thing. I, you know, we're running, Can you do it in one more stop? I think we can. Uh, we'll have to stretch it a little bit here in, you know, in the middle, but we should be able to make it on one more. Uh, you know, it's, gonna, it's a little bit tight, you know, not, no question about it, but, uh, you know, we've been getting great mileage with this car all, all year long, so uh, we'll just have to stretch it again. More important, it's a fast, fast race car. To Matt. Dick, Dick back at California, Slugger Labby was trying to work the fuel mileage game to your advantage, and you lost out twice on that. Are you trying to work the fuel mileage gamble again tonight, Slugger? Well, we were trying to, you know, but caution flags are killing us right now. We were hoping to go back green and stay green and go to 330 pit again, and we can run, you know, to the end there, but Napa Chevrolet's running good, and if it works out, it works out. If it don't, it don't. We've been running top 10 all day long, and that's what we come here to do, so hopefully uh, we'll stay there. His best finish, Michael Waltrip's here at Charlotte, third twice. Meanwhile, their teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., came in and topped off. Steve Burns? Well, man, I just went down to Robbie Gordon's 